Hello fellow do-it-yourselfers. Um, I wanted to share um, a test I used to test the idle air control valve. A little background uh, of what that does. Uh, his job is to uh, help the engine get more air uh, either when you're starting the car uh, to help uh, make idle quality very good uh, and also compensate for adding or removing load from the engine like air conditioning uh, things like that. Um, why would I run these tests? I would run these tests if um, the car was idling poorly, uh, hard starting, uh, especially let's say you, you won't start unless you push on the gas pedal opening the throttle plate, um, or uh, the car starts to stumble or idle quality goes uh, very poor um, after turning on the AC. Um, I'm going to run three tests. The first test is with my ear when the car starts up. Number two, when the car is running, I'm going to add load and remove load from the motor or engine. Excuse me, it's not a motor, it's an engine. Um, and make sure the RPM and uh, IAC percentage opens up. That shows the PCM can control it and the IAC valve is able to move freely. The last is to use a bi-directional test. Um, as you can see, I'm using a, a snap-on product, um, but you don't have to use a snap-on product. You just need any bi-directional tool, um, and they should have this capability. What we're working on is a uh, 2001 uh, F-150, so let's, let's start. I have air conditioning with an automatic transmission. I'm going into functional tests. Idle speed command test. So this is the, the first test. Um, it asked me to start the car, but I'm going to run my test with my ear. Um, I'm going to turn the ignition to start, but I'm not going to touch the accelerator pedal. And listen to the RPM. Maybe rewind it and you'll hear that the engine actually jumped in RPM and went boom. That is what the PCM does to allow additional air to have the car start and to know where the uh, IAC position is. I'm going to start my test by continuing. I want to expand. I like to see the IAC percentage and the RPM. I'm going to let the uh, engine warm up and get, become stable. Then I'm going to run my second test, which is adding load. I'm going to turn on the air conditioner. And what should happen, the RPM should rise. That's because the PCM receives the signal from the AC button, prepares the motor for additional load, and then turns on the clutch to the AC compressor. I think it's good now. I'm going to turn on the AC. And it did. It increased it to 50% and the RPM rose accordingly. So that worked. So that definitely clearly shows the PCM has connectivity, meaning uh, the, the wire integrity is good to the IAC and the IAC was able to move. 
I'm going to turn off the AC and continue on to my third test. And the IAC moved back down to normal idle. I'm going to begin this test now where I'm going to be allowed to tell the computer to change the IAC percentage opening. I'm going to start the test. Um, in other cars, um, sometimes they allow you to go up by 1% at a time. In this particular case, it's by 10% at a time. What do you notice? The IEC percentage moved to 50 and the RPM raised quickly and smoothly. I know it looks like it's jumping around, but look at the scale. I'm going to go up to 60% now. If you remember when the AC was on, it went to 50% for this particular uh, you know, environment. Temperature, engine load, all that. I'm going to go down to 50. You know, the engine responds very quickly, smoothly. I'm going to go back to 40. And in this particular case, okay, I'm going to end this test, this test by returning. Now I'm not sending commands anymore. So that concludes these three tests. From my experience, it, it did very well. It passed. Um, one thing to note, a lot of modern cars don't have an IAC any longer. The IAC valve uh, allows air to go around the throttle plates. In a, a lot of newer cars, they use a concept called fly-by-wire, um, which means you're actually telling the computer where to move the throttle plate, and it does it. Whereas in uh, cars with IACs, there's an actual cable between your lead foot, in my case, to all the way to the butterflies which move the plate. So therefore it needs an extra device, in this case an IAC, to get air. It's like the old choke in the older cars. That's how uh, it handled it. Modern cars use an IAC. Anyways, just wanted to let you know that. And even though it's fly-by-wire, uh, from my experience, a lot of those cars also have the capability to test uh, adjusting, changing idle. Some don't, and some do. You'll just have to see if your scan tool has that test available. Hi, I wanted to add to this video um, at least two types of IACs I've encountered. Um, the top one here um, is a classic Ford type. And this bottom one I've seen in Subarus and in Toyotas. Um, the difference between these two is the, the Ford, um, here's the air passages and it has a pintle that goes in and out and closes off the hole. Uh, it's like um, a cork, it's sort of a concept of a cork and it, uh, it moves in and out the, the cork so uh, the red, red amount of uh, air can go by. Whereas this one down here, um, this one uses a coolant right here, it goes through here and keeps it uh, warm and works in cold weather. Um, and then here is where the air is either, uh, you know, the outside air is allowed to go into the intake. And how this works is it has a, um, like a shutter that's moved in and out that rotates and uh, opens one specific side. Why do I describe this? Well, with the Ford type, I've, I've, I've gotten about 60% um, to 70% success in cleaning them. Whereas, unfortunately, in this bottom type, the shutter type, I've gotten 0%. Uh, um, I've had to replace uh, about the three or four that I've worked on. I was not able to clean them. Um, but maybe your experience would be different. Just wanted to share my experience. One thing I wanted to say when you do clean them, I use carburetor cleaner, and make sure to have the top 
part this is where all the electronics are the motor the windings connectors um, you want it high because you don't want your carburetor cleaner to get into there and maybe short it or ruin it at least that's what I do and then I use a uh, carburetor cleaner I let it sit in there I usually plug this with my finger and just keep it in there and use picks to clean it uh, likewise here um, you want to make sure the electronics here is at the top and then you clean it um, and use uh, I, I, I fill it lean it back uh, keep a carburetor clean in there and try to use picks and gently move it around and try to move the actuator very gently around and clean it um, again unfortunately um, I've had uh, good luck better than half uh, better better than 50 percent I should say with the four type and <laughs> zero percent success with the uh, Asian type. I found this in uh, Subarus and Toyotas. I don't know if Nissans would have them. I don't recall working on a Nissan's uh, IAC. They may be similar. Anyway, I just wanted to, to share that and uh, hopefully that helps you. Um, oh, I've also had, uh, I've overheard some people say they use an uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Um, I never did that because then you'd have to Sur, you know submerse it obviously uh, maybe that would work I would think it would but I'm nervous about obviously you don't want to uh, submerse the electronics part um, maybe somehow rig it so that part stays uh, above the solution um. thank you for watching I hope you found the information helpful